I just realized I don't think I have an outline, so you'll go on this meander with me. So yeah, it's, this is kind of an extension of work that I did in a prior role where I was amazed at the kind of lack of what I thought were kind of foundational practices that were needed. So seeing, uh, you know, kind of the other array of talks here at this conference, I kind of shifted what my focus would be, and I thought, for a lot of you, hopefully this is really basic stuff, but if it's not, then hopefully this is super useful to you. So um, let's see how it goes. Um, all right, so wanted to highlight, you know, best practices doc. Hopefully everybody kind of knows that, but we're going to dig into foundations and basics of, you know, how to automate and test some stuff. I'm taking Git as a given. I hope that's pretty, pretty reasonable. Hopefully you get something out of it if you're not, but, you know, whatever. Let's have unsmelly code. Let's, you know, eat our vegetables brush our teeth, et cetera. Sometimes it's hard to get out of the mindset that I just need to push this DAG, I need to push this feature as quickly as possible. There's just some core things that are useful to do. I think we know that, you know, so I draw that analogy, hopefully that kind of makes sense. Here's just GitHub, because I'm gonna use a bunch of examples from GitHub workflows. You can also not use GitHub and, you know, GitLab, et cetera, all does very similar things, but in the, in the notion of automation and hygiene, get rid of old issues and pull requests if they're no longer valid. Pretty simple, but not always practiced. I started thinking about how to get the teams that I'm working with rowing together. I don't know why I thought of that when I did this, but I really like this really long boat, and you know, I'm saying, I don't wanna have too much cognitive burden my head on fire, so it's easy if we have common practices and consistency throughout the group. So in Python, I mean, with Airflow, that's a whole lot of Python, and we're gonna then talk about stuff in the Airflow home plugins and DEGs folders especially, right? Because that's the thing. So, oh, here's a bit of outline, I guess, now. So we, you know, I wanna talk a little bit about the value of consistent environments. I'm gonna talk about kind of a whole lot of tools and how they may be useful for you. I think there's some more that's not on here because whatever, extra bullet point. So I've seen in a number of organizations the, you know, the pretty basic things of does the version on my machine match the version on your machine, match the version on whoever else's machine, match what's running in production. There's a bunch of tools that handle this these days. Hopefully we're thinking about that because those are really unfun to debug, right? So for Python specifically, there's poetry. I mean, hopefully at least you guys have requirements.txt files you're using. Poetry is a fantastic tool that I think makes a bunch of sense, but it's only for the Python ecosystem. So if you want to go a uh, layer, you know, kind of more generic than that, I'm a huge fan of Nix, but that's pretty complicated for people, and if not, dev containers is a great way to go. So I'll share a little bit about these. So wider than the Python ecosystem, Nix. Super cool, I'd say check out the tutorial, question mark, unless you're super into it, it's probably way more work than, than you really wanna deal with, but I really like it. I think it's one of the, forget, I think I saw a stat that it's one of the most contributed to open source projects, because it's like a whole build world. So if you wanna go down a rabbit hole, Check it out. I like it, at least for my local, but have had a lot of difficulty getting teams I've worked with to use it, unless it's an organization that's super bought in and has a team to do that. The easier thing to do, which is pretty prolific throughout the industry these days, is dev containers. Right? It's super built into GitHub, which I imagine a lot of you are using, VS Code, plugins available for other major IDEs. Right, define your environment, basically Docker file, but use it in your IDE. Right, so that solves at least one layer of problems I've had collaborating with my teammates, right? You know, poetry specifically, then I know that the version on my machine is the version on your machine, is the version running in prod, assuming I keep those up to date. Here's another one, pre-commit. 
I hope you guys are using pre-commit. It's a fantastic tool for running a whole lot of stuff pre or before you run your git commit. All right, let's see. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of supported hooks. Check it out. The, line, the Airflow repo has a 1,346 line file for their pre-commit. So I'm also, a lot of these tools where the Airflow project itself uses, I'm gonna to try to highlight that because I don't know, I guess that gives it a little more credibility. So for instance, you would have a pre-commit config.yaml file, and this would be maybe how you'd want to get started. Before you commit anything, check your YAML, check if at the end of file has a new line, check if there's trailing white spaces on lines, and verify your TOML and JSON files. Pretty straightforward, and those stocks are all previously linked. I'll show the slides, etc. I hope a whole lot of you are familiar with Black. Super, super basic by way of, I don't wanna have discussions about what my code looks like with somebody else. We need to pay attention to the, like actually delivering some value. So not that I take issue or love the specifics of how it formats things, but that just lets me focus on other things, right? So using something like Black, which hopefully should be uncontentious, but introducing new tools to groups can be difficult. That's kind of a decent starting place. So I highlight from a pre-commit config here what it would look like to add black. And once you're starting to use pre-commits, you can also, which are running local and before you commit, at some point you're gonna need to push your code, right, and get it over to your repo. So I like to get as much work as I can done, get done locally, right, that's at least done in reasonable time and makes sense. And then ideally I run enough so that I know by the time I push it and it takes time, it's all gonna pass after it takes its time on the servers. The, the important thing though is pre-commit is not enough and really, I, or at least I strongly subscribe to protect the repository. Don't let junk get its way into the repository. We'll see in a second why that makes sense, but you know, who knows what people aren't doing on their developer machines, right? So let the machines check what people are doing before it gets its way into the code base. Here's you know, a more complicated example of a black GitHub action. So as I mentioned, dev containers. You can uh, build the container, which you then have locally, as well as say host it on GitHub. So even the same exact container that's running on my machine with the various dependencies is the same exact container running in the GitHub app. So that's kind of the off the shelf. There's also ways to extend it with, to optimize runtime. So one of which would be only verify and run the checks that you want on the files that have changed, right? Not, there's pros and cons to every pull request. Do you need to check your entire code base or do you only need to check the things that have changed? Talking about Airflow here, right? So there have been some cool things for linting, right? So the PyLint Airflow had been awesome. I don't think it's been updated for even V2 Airflow. There's AirLint, which looks nice, but is not production ready. So kind of why am I talking about these? To set up the next bit here. So Ruff is a super cool tool. Right, so runs, or we'll get to that in a second, but I guess relevant to Airflow, there's been a long-standing thread on let's extend rough to include those rules previously mentioned so that they can run super fast. So there's been one rule so far that got written that the task variable name should be the same as the task ID. That's in there. There's so much useful stuff in rough, but wanted to call out that that's open source project, open for contributions, especially for anybody that wants to figure out and get their hands dirty with some rust, because that's what it's written in under the hood. Okay, so what is rough? It's extremely fast, you know, that re-implements a whole lot of other tools like Flake 8 and other things for code quality. So this here is basically unreadable, but it's meant to you can tell that's a whole lot of individual lists and links. So it's re-implementing a whole lot of things, but it just runs so much faster. Highlighting, oh, cool. Not only do I think Rough is great, 
here's the creator of Rough that's highlighting, hey, Apache Airflow has been using it. But there's a link to the tweet from October 23, right? So it has been, what, coming up on a year at this point. How would you use Rough, right? You may want to use something like this pre-commit. Throw your revert, revision, you know, pull the, and the relevant bit, I guess, is deciding if you're okay on pre-commit, I personally am, to fix files where they're fixable, right? I'm happy as long as it's local, because then I can look at git diffs. I'm okay with that. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Let's let the computer uh, fix the things that, at least the unambiguous things that it has enough confidence uh, to do. So that's probably worth uh, paying attention to. Maybe you can tell where I'm going now. You can then also run the, a GitHub action that runs rough, right? So if, you, if I've run it locally, I want it to run remote to actually verify that somebody, I had developers turning off their you know, pre-commits because they didn't like the runtime. You gotta you know, put these things in place. Airflow runs a whole lot of SQL or at least in a lot of places that I've been, right? So in the same just basic code quality things, there's a great tool called SQL Fluff, right? It does these things. It supports, here's a kind of unreadable list, right? It supports a whole lot of dialects. Not all, right? But there's then, there's room to contribute if you're, probably the core of what you need is already there. And if you need something obscure, whatever, either don't use it or contribute. So in the past, we've also written custom plugins for SQL Fluff, specifically for as we start thinking about test environments, right? In addition to prod, hopefully you guys aren't all, you know, just let's throw our test eggs into the prod environment, see what happens, because that's, you know, convenient and the permissions are already worked out. So one, one helpful thing that we found was templatizing the specific, in this case, I'm talking about running Airflow on GCP, as we'll see, but wherever, right, is the namespace, the database, the schema, whatever it might be, you can templatize that. Kind of highlighting, again, automation is cool. So I've seen, you know, people do pull requests into Git, do these sorts of things, but then needing to manually log into another system just to press the deploy button. Why? Right, so, so kind of as I said, with safeguards that you know we put in place, once the code is okay, deploy it. But again, protect the repo, put all those sorts of things. Not only protect the repo, or I'll comment on that in a second. Here's, you know, for example, some automation to deploy once I am able to push into master with the appropriate safeguards in place, you know, that prohibits it unless all the various tests pass. I think the relevant bits here are, oh, best practice is calling out. Try to not use service account keys. There's a lot of technologies that exist that are now keyless based on identity. So, you know, for whatever that's worth. Highlighting this great book, I think there's a second edition also in the works, but then chapter nine specifically on testing. This gets into, I'll call it some more airflow specific relevant pieces, but is, um, so would be worth considering to dig into, right? The sort of things we've been walking through, I think are, we'll call it even prerequisites, or less contentious things, or help you kind of get to that part of the journey. What else might you want to look at? I even like things like action lint. I want to lint even my GitHub actions that I'm writing, All right? <laughs> Let's, you know, Python is great for some reasons, but I don't like that there's not data types. That makes me nervous, so there's you know tools for that. The book's gonna dig into PyTest, so that would be useful. Think about maybe con committing to, extending, or cajoling your various vendors of Airflow to maybe continue extending the rough rules. Uh, make sure to check out that book, and if you do all of these things, you'll be, you know, in especially solid shape. Yeah, that's it. Thanks.